Well, hi, YouTubers. Hi, I'm back with a Six More City Books, and uh, it is Tamma Pierce Wild Magic. I got this in a Luma Cray, um back in November and actually uploaded it until now. So, anyway, let's uh, read the blurb. Danny's been alone in the wild for a long time, a little feral and running from a tragedy that drove away from her home. Danny's strange affinity of animals has kept her alive. This now Kelly's day in service with the Queen's Riders when she meets Una Champtong at market. Finally, it seems as though she's leading a life of uncertainty and danger behind. But the journey to deliver horses back to the capital is interrupted when nightmarish creatures drop from the sky, chasing a hawk. <coughs> Sorry. The hell just started a new life for Dane, one filled with adventures, romance, war, and more magic than she could ever imagine. Okay, I'm going to finish it. It's a really, really long blurb, by the way. Okay. Now, I read this book when I was about 13 years old, so it's nice to actually reread it again. Now, <clears throat> Tamara Pierce, the immortal, she did some of the lioness, she did like, this entire like trilogy, this like series, okay, set in this fantasy universe, which is one of the most realistic universes I've ever, ever read. You know how a lot of fantasy universes, there's a lot of like, exposition, info dumps, pages and pages of characters, this just throws you in. You figure out what's going along. And it's quite a utopian society as well, okay, the way it's presented. It's kind of less knights and rules and the typical archetypes and more, a bit more low key. I quite like that. Let me just, uh, let me just, um, there we go. It's a chapter one, Girl of a Pony. Every year at the end of March, a great fair was held in Crea, the capital um, gala. Like thousands of others in the eastern lands, Una Champton went there to do business, buying ponies in her case. The shooter had another transaction to make, and she was having no luck with it. By the end of the fifth day at the fair, it seemed that she would never find the assistance she required. The prospect of taking an animal south with no one to help was an unpleasant one. Excuse me, Trader Una. The girl was a girl, the speaker was a girl, a shy and country bred. I heard you were hiring. I'm. She paused and then went on. A fair girl with animals. So if a hand with animals, all kinds. She waited as Una looked her over. A girl in a green wool dress, skirt short enough to show leggings and boots, firm curls tamed by a hair scarf, fell to thin shoulders. A soft full mouth said she was vulnerable. Her chin was entirely stubborn. Great way to introduce a character. Great way to introduce... This is just such a great book. So, <clears throat> Dane has been on the road for a really long time and she has been blessed. I don't want to spoil anything. She's been blessed with this natural gift. She's been blessed with the ability to talk to animals. Even though it may actually destroy her life and actually kill her, she has an affinity with them. She's blessed, she's gifted, but obviously it's a gift that needs to be tempered and kind of tamed in some ways. It's a quite a wild kind of magic. So there's a bit of an ambiguity with her situation is, which side was she for? I don't want to spoil this because it's kind of like a big evil coming in, but this one is. But it's just the beauty and elegance and depth of the writing. This book came out over 20 years ago, but it felt so relevant. And one thing I absolutely loved is, okay, you can argue that Tamara Pierce is a feminist author, because she writes very, very strong female characters. But she also writes very, very strong male characters as well. There is no Prince book now. A lot of fantasy novels, especially based with female protagonists now, okay, not even just fantasy novels in, in general. If you have a, a strong female protagonist, you've got to have a weak male. No, 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 no. This presents quite an equal-footed world, okay? Men and women are presented quite equal in this world. With The Song of the Lioness, um, now, this is one of her earliest books. Early character in that, she actually dressed up as a pen to be a man, to be come a knight, okay? But even though she was still dressed up as a knight, she still had to work at it to become a knight, okay? With her disguise. And then further along, due to her actions, the rules kind of got lessened. So basically, due to actions of strong women, it became equal society, and men are also still as equal, if you understand. Okay. But she knows in 92, this was quite relevant, okay? So, further along, this is page 62, this kind of world it presents is, um, this is when she is at, like, the castle, if you will, she's sitting there and just kind of get to know people. And this, this kind of bit here, okay? Let's go and eat, the woman told her. I'm starving. You must be too. Then climb the fence. I think the whole city knows my name, she grumbled. I set off towards the barracks. Did you tell me yours? No. It's Tayet. The 
queen. Anyone I can afford it, said Ted de Tortel. Please don't get a form on me now. We were having such a nice talk. Diana scowled. This was a strange place. Knights used, knights used to call them by their first names, and wizards at like Tinder, and queens that run around dressed like real people. Tay it laugh. No wonder Alana, oh, Alana is the hunter, she's the knight. I knew more like you. You have a very unusual way of looking at things. So, this is also a world, okay, where peasants can become royalty. It's, like, this is another good example, okay? It's further along where Dane is basically having to wear men's clothes for the first time, okay? This is page 67. I just love, I just love this bit. It's kind of, just this bit sums up the kind of politics of the land and everyone's mentality. It's men's gear. Um, Dan explained shyly, at home the priests and the headmen, they'd never approve. Forget them, Curie said, checking the clothes. You're ours now. I'm not saying there won't be people who crab from pinch at you. That's human nature after all, alas. They nodded, she knew. But here lies what you make it. You used to, it doesn't matter. Look at Sarge. He was a slave once. He was beaten by a husband and left to die. Her master and commander brewer had to free Stannon. So it's Serain, do you catch my drift? Yeah. This is the world where a society where people can work hard and be what they want in life. I absolutely love it. Further on the tension really, really rises as well. This is now this this is just I just love the writing of this book. This is the way that Dana's communicating with um Dragon, yeah, fine, said it. Then it sounded in her mind and ears were lapping of waves. It would happen again, just like at home. The queen would die before she let Katakis take her or her children. Yemi would burn out. The raiders would win. If she learned her lesson, the better she, if she explained them at the palace instead of waiting until the badger came to her. At the beach. If you listen long and hard, you can hear any of us, call any of us that you want. So now she was so clearly that she looked up, trying to find the badger. It was nowhere to be seen. I maybe it's just me, but this this fantastic setting with wolves and dragons and magic and a girl who communicates with a badger. This weird kind of exposition. It's it's in a way it's quite a serious book, but the way Dane talks to her animals is also on some level also hysterical. Yeah. So this is book one of the Immortals Quartet. Now, I don't want to spoil anything. I won't spoil anything, but it's so vivid and rich and well written. And also, timeless as well, because this book came out about 20 years ago. This book is also quite timeless. Almost 20 years ago, 1952. 20 years ago? No, not 20 years ago. Over 20 years ago. Actually, it's 20 years ago. Yeah. So, this book is so good, so vivid, so creative and I absolutely loved it so Tamar Pierce Wild Magic Sound of YouTube a 660 book and bye now